time. I'm Trevor Horn, and this is Chris Squire, and we are making a Yes album. We've made one before. We made a couple before. Oh, a couple before, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you see, you forgot too. Yeah, two yeah. before. And uh, this will be the third one, so third time lucky. I'll give him a hug, for the, just, just for the moment, only because it's on camera. Ah, oh, and he gave me a kiss. <laughs> oh dear, now I'm infected. <laughs> It's been a great pleasure uh, working with Trevor again on a song that we, we actually came up with years and years ago when we were shooting the drama album. Which was the album we made uh, back in 1980 when uh, uh, Trevor Horn was the singer and it was a contender for the album uh, but um, we had enough material with the, with the other tracks that went on so there wasn't room for it. Life from here goes back a long way, yeah, I and mean, certainly the initial idea that I think uh, Trav and I had for it goes back um, probably, probably 30, 30 odd years. When I first met um, Chris, I mean, uh, what happened was, you know, the, the, the Buggles uh, didn't have a manager. Um, Jill suggested Brian Lane because she'd worked with him and Brian Lane also managed Jess. And I was kind of quite keen to, to be managed by Brian Lane at the time, funny enough because of the fact, you know, I was an old Yes fan and I knew it might, I was still curious about Yes, even though I hadn't liked Tomato. Uh, and uh, Jeff and I went down to where Chris lived, which is a beautiful neo-Gothic mansion in Virginia Water, and met him. And during the course of a conversation, I said, we've got a song, Jeff and I, that might be good for Yes. And I played him a bit of Fly From Here. And of course he said the fateful words, you sound a bit like John Anderson. And Fly For Me was the first track that we rehearsed with the band. It was kind of a pretty mad experience for me because at the time, having been a sort of Yes fan for 10 years, to actually be in a rehearsal room with them working on a song that I'd written was a rather extraordinary experience. There's no one sleeping, no one awake. I'd start an engine in the night if only just to break. He jumped in the deep end, really, because Trevor uh, felt at home with that song, wanted to develop it with us, so that was really exciting. It was actually the sort of interim track that we, we, we when we first got hooked up with the, with the other guys in Yes, that was the one that kind of um, brought us together, if you like. Fly From Here was part of the drama um, writing period, uh, but not the whole of the song we have now, but actually the first, what we call part one, which is a, quite a sizable song. Um, we, we did play it on, on stage a few times, had a great time with it, and somehow forgot all about it. We never recorded it, so about a year ago I was talking to Chris, I don't know, we had a few drinks, and <laughs> I said, why don't, I, why don't we record Fly from here? You know, I suggested it to Steve and Alan, and everyone seemed uh, keen on it. I went over to America for two weeks with the band, with the used to sing a band while we did fly from here. I want to be the one who always gives you shelter. It's a great experience. It's the first time I go through this process this way, uh, doing it right and taking the time that it requires. Always there beside you, but we both must face the dawn. us uh, 
um, was uh, sort of intensified by the idea of well, let's do that song. And what's happened now is that we've expanded the whole piece into a 20 minute plus long piece in classic, uh, classic yes style, I guess you could say. And basically, it, it's an adventure in music. It's quite long, uh, way longer than it, it was in the beginning. Trevor started getting involved with them on this album, it kind of reared its head again. It surfaced again, which I was glad about, because it's uh, actually a very, very, very good song. It's turned out to be the, I guess, the centerpiece of the, of the new Yes album, which is called Fly From Here. It's just a, a later beat, yeah. It Just one more time, same thing. Yeah, okay. Just for timing. In the 70s, we were in a, you know, in a hiatus of, of excitement about just being free to do whatever we like. And I think over the years, we've, um, we've we lost that occasionally. And, and now, particularly with Trevor coming back with us, uh, you know, we feel like a, a sort of bonded group again. Da, 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 da. Makes it a little bit more melodic. Yeah, that's what he's playing. Yeah. Let's make it a little bit more of a A, B, A, B, as opposed to A, 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 A. I think the main thing that a group does is um, it kind of meanders around until the producer comes along and kind of like says, well, look, you guys have got it, but you haven't quite tweaked it. And I think that production is very much about you know, bringing style to the overall project, having a view of the overall project when some musicians all of us are guilty of, uh, of getting ca cabin fever and we see the music. So it's great to have that other person who is thinking about the overall. It was funny working with the guys again, you know. I mean, you've got to realise the last time I worked with them, aside from the show that I did at uh, Wembley where they played, the last time I was in the studio with them was, you know, um, 1983. I guess it's like anything, you know, when you're playing all the time, everybody was playing even better than they were playing back in 1983 or 1980 when I worked. You know, everyone's still in really good shape. Nobody's lost it. If anything, they're in better shape. I'm uh, really happy uh, with the way uh, everybody's playing. Chris, Steve, Alan have been around for quite a while, and uh, they're at the top of their game. The music is great, and Trevor, too, uh, puts in a really uh, nice color uh, into this. Um, I think we pretty much shed the illusion that, um, you know, we need to hold on to something in our sound. Uh, fortunately, Chris and I and Alan are sort of like the basic nucleus of the group. Are are still sounding like we always have done. So we're not kind of pretending to be like we were, we were just like we are. Obviously we've, you know, we've all changed. He, he doesn't want to sing with Yes, but, but for him to be going back like he did with 90125 and producing Yes, it has a sort of sensibility, a logic about it. There's under the hydrogen. Okay. What else is there? Was there a, well, the, the just verse. see if, if you've had something in the verse. Yeah. In this it, verse. Oh, the yeah. second verse, right? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Just right. have a go. <clears throat> Do you want to go? For me, he's a great producer because we, we never seem to argue about anything much. 
uh, honestly, uh, our difference of opinion is about 0.002%, so it's like uh, nothing to worry about. And it's really good fun, you know, we, we, I think we always had a very good communication in the studio. And, um, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And of course, getting back with the Yes guys is something that, I mean, I, I've obviously worked with Steve quite a lot in Asia, so I know, you know, I know Steve probably better than the other guys, but uh, of course I was in Alan's band as well, White, so, you know, there's a lot of connections between, um, historically, between me and, and Yes. It, it's quite an experience uh, working with Trevor Horn again because it's kind of an adventure back into the past because I remember so many times everything goes into so much detail and we work things out and it's actually absolutely a, a kind of great pleasure to work with because you know things will be kind of taken care of and um, you're going to enjoy the end product. Trevor has such a, a great understanding of the band, having been a fan of the band before he first joined, and then actually being the singer in the band on the drummer album, so he knows the band from the inside. You know, for me, Yes always had the most exciting rhythm section out of any rock band, you know, certainly the, certainly the most innovative and j just in every way the most musical. Um, so I wanted that. I didn't want anything programmed. I wanted it to sound more like the band sounded in the 70s necessarily than the band sounded in the 80s. It doesn't seem that long ago. It seems almost like yesterday now we're back doing it, but uh, it's a pleasure for me. It's a great experience working with Trevor Horn is a hell of a nice experience. Uh, this guy's been around, he knows what he's doing, and he's really uh, taking the best out of us. It would be an illusion to say, oh, this record sounds like the 70s. But the thing that might be, there might be a concept in our new album, right here, that, that does carry a lot of that 70s, but it's not about copying the sound. It's really about just thinking in that way. If, if you're thinking of any kind of concept, the concept from my point of view was yes, of yes, yes, was always five voices, you know, four musicians and a singer, but you know, two of the musicians sing as well, Steve and Chris. I think we have great kind of, uh, kind of, we trust him a lot. That, when we come back and he's gone through all of this stuff in the studio that everything, you know, pretty much will be, uh, will be like we need it.